Hey there, listeners. Welcome to Shit That Goes On In Our Heads, the podcast where we normalize conversations around mental health. That's right. I'm Dirty Skittles, and alongside my amazing co-host, Hugh Rex, we are here to share real stories and tips from our incredible guests. Each episode, we deep dive into struggles and triumphs of mental health, offering practical advice and heartfelt support. Because no one should feel alone in their journey. Join us as we break the stigma and build a community of understanding and compassion. Tune in and let's start talking about the shit that goes on in our heads. Three, Three two, two, one. Yeah. Welcome back to another episode of Shit That Goes On In Our Heads. I'm Dirty Skittles. Me and G-Rex are joined here today by Mary K. Savaris. Welcome, Mary. Welcome, Mary. Thank you so much for having me, G-Rex and Dirty Skittles. I am so thrilled to be here. I am too. I am too. I have to ask, what's the poster behind you? Those are my two books in my trilogy. The first one is, I write with quirky titles. So the first one is The Girl in the Twelve Wallpaper. My genre is fantasy adventure because reality is too real for me. And the second book coming out next week is The Star Writers Club, Fantasy Adventure. <laughs> I like being. Uh, oh, my genre of like what I what I have been reading as of late might be a little bit different. I mean, it's fantasy, but I yes. now have fallen into the spicy book content, so the adult romance type stuff. So, yeah, everything share. is good. What about you, G Rex? What are you reading these days? She is <laughs> dying. <laughs> I am dying. I've been reading a lot of self help books <clears throat> lately. I found myself kind of getting back into like a depression path. So I just started reading some books and doing a lot of journaling more than reading. Yeah, I hear you. So we're on two opposite sides of the world, aren't we? Uh, yeah, we are. You still go to shit and I still work for a great company, but I, you know, I needed a release. So I just started writing again. Yeah, yeah I hear you. Well, welcome. So what got you into writing? You know, many years ago, I always had these ideas to create a fantasy world. And I raised the family and everything worked, everything, the volunteering, the work, and my time always went on the back burner. So I always had this desire and I had to prove it to myself. So once they had three kids, older kids, once they started to go off to college, I just sat down and I started to put my ideas down on paper. And this was over 10 years ago. And my goal back then was to become a traditionally published fiction author. And little did I know, <laughs> talk about a shit show, because rejection after rejection. And back then, public, self-publishing was taboo. It's not what it is today. And it took me over 10 years to find, well, to have a publisher come to me, a small publishing house, and say, hey, we're interested. But I always joke that I'm an overnight success, a 10-year overnight <laughs> success. But Part of that journey for me and being with you here today, it really helped me in the dark times of my life becoming an empty nester and not dealing with that anymore, but, you know, dealing with other issues that I have to come to terms with now. And what I loved about going through your recent shows are the tools you need to do that because never ended never as you said Rex, it's journaling you know it's just never ending and I find myself dealing with new anxiety things in my life that I didn't deal with before so it's a journey it is a journey you know it's funny like depression just kind of creeps back up on you and kind of comes out from it from nowhere now, this one kind of had a reason for coming back, but it came back and I was like, well, you know, I have tools. One of my tools is journaling. So I just started writing and writing and I, the more I wrote, the better I felt. And also just kind of stepping away from social media for a little bit helped immensely. Yeah. Question. Yes. When you 
have you always kind of had like this want to be creative in that outlet of writing? Or did it one day you're like, let me just give it a shot and it worked? I, and I love, that's what you are and what I am. We are creative. I just love that term. It, like I said, it was always something, uh, it was a passion that was always in my belly. And it took a while for, as, as I said, I had to have time for myself. And once the kids started to leave the nest, uh, that's where my writing really took off. And I journal everything myself, titles. Like for me, I write with quirky titles. The The title of my first debuting novel is Tiger's Love, Bubble Bats, and Obsession Perfume. Who knew? And that was a murder mystery. And that was the first book that I received a contract for. So it's always been, I start with something in my life that I'm exposed to. And that particular title, I had visited a reserve in St. Augustine, a wildlife reserve. And there was this beautiful 600-pound Siberian tiger that walked across the plank and slipped into this vat of bubbles. And they sprayed obsession perfume on the tiger's tongue. And I went, oh, my God, my mouth was open. I said, that is the title of my next novel. (laughs) Because here's this creature. He was like a person just swimming in the bubbles. And I created a whole story around that. And basically, the girl in the toile wallpaper, when I live in Florida now, back then I lived in Connecticut, and I love toile. Now, toile is not a mural. Toile is very artistic. It can be fabric. It can be wallpaper, anything. It's been around for centuries. And it's two very vibrant colors. And it tells a story. It has different scenes. And I loved it so much. I had it. So much. I had so much wallpaper in my house. I couldn't even sell my house because they said it was just (laughs) too much. But when I looked at that wallpaper, I saw love. I saw betrayal. I saw everything. And I wrote the story. And, you know, and back and after you would think as a creative, as an author, the, the Tiger's book did exceptionally well, award winning, eight awards best-selling. And then when I went to my publisher, I said, I have an idea for a trilogy. And they said, "Eh, we're not interested in trilogies. And I approached another small publishing house, an all-woman publishing house, and they were interested. And then I went, oh, can I say the word? S-H-I-T? Yes, 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 absolutely. Absolutely. I went, oh, shit. I just sold them a trilogy I'm halfway through the first one. I have a general idea of the second one. And I have a general idea of the third one. And it was like, oh, my God. (laughs) Talk about anxiety. But one thing I find is a creative. This is what helps me. I hate the marketing part. I hate all of that. The girl in the toile wallpaper has won like six awards. and But I love the creative part. Because I've learned, I, I deal with severe anxiety. And I learned that if I am creating, all that goes away. So that is my desire. That is my passion. My husband runs around, does a million things. I'm a homebody. Just leave me to my writing and Ugh. I am in heaven. <laughs> that's my love language. You're talking about my life. I'm like, that, that just sounds perfect to me. So I'm, I have to like take a moment here because I find it very interesting. Your creative outlet, right? Helped you deal with anxiety. And then G Rex, you also going through your battle with depression and just life and turning to journaling to help you with that. And I just think it's like the, the both of you are on the same level, but just different sides of that scale. So I just think that's. Super interesting. And I had to at least acknowledge it. So G-Rex, for you, where you are now, because I know your writing is... I know the last time we talked, you were having like a bit of a writer's block. Are you still there? Or are you able to kind of work through at least journaling through it? Well, over the last you know couple of weeks, 
you know, I got a trauma response, right? So I was able to take that trauma response and it opened up a block. So I've now been able to like really take like that trauma that happened right around Christmas time and put it on paper. And that's exactly where I want it. I want it out of my head and onto some paper, but it's very healing. Like I, I would say over the last week, I've probably written like over a hundred pages and just like really like zoned in on that. My little empathetic heart needed to find an outlet. And so after I talked to my therapist, she's like, go back to writing. So I did. I went back to writing and it's night and day. I'm able to take all that negativity and all the hurt and all the pain and put it on paper. And then once I do that, I can walk away and I feel so much better. And I I really think that like journaling is great. And sometimes it's not words. Sometimes it's doodles. Sometimes it's just random thoughts. But when I went back and read it, I was like, damn, this is good. I think that's what happens, right? Like, I think when you start to feed that part of yourself and like invest time back into something that's making you happy or it's serving a purpose for you, like, I just think that's like the best to just be able to dive into yourself like that. So Mary Kay, when you're, when your kids left, like when you became an empty nester, did you find that's really when your anxiety like really started to kick in? You know, I've had anxiety my whole life, but not something that I wasn't, I didn't even think about it. It's not something I wasn't able to control. And sometimes there's an anxiety that it's good because it prevents you from procrastinating. But then there's that bad anxiety. So basically what happened for me when the third was a senior in college, something went on that subconscious level in my brain. And what happened to me was it exposed, that anxiety exposed itself physically. I would be, I remember I was, and my legs would go numb. My arms would go numb. And I had no idea it was this severe anxiety. So at that point, I had all these physical tests done. And there was nothing wrong. That's where you start. And that's when they say, look, time to get some help. And I always avoided that. I'm like, I don't need any help. I could figure this out by myself, right? Women, we, we wear so many hats. And we're always doing a million things. Well, it got worse and worse. And thank God that I did have a very close friend. She said, no, we're going to get you into therapy and That is where I did go on medication for severe anxiety and the tools began. And for me, and it took me a year and a half to come to the realization that I had to deal with this, that my family unit was dead. And what I mean by that is the babies I raised, the toddlers I chased after, the teenagers, I would stay up all night waiting for them to come home. They were gone. And my brain just wasn't able to accept that. And once I worked with the tools, as you said, G-Rex, the journaling, the breathing, the, you know, and it's, you know, you turn to, like, I turned to the Prosecco. And that you learn just makes things worse and you have to weigh everything in your life. But, you know, and then I'm grateful that I did go through that journey because I ended up on the other side and you learn and you're able to deal with it. And this is life. Yeah. I like that you said go through that journey because I think sometimes it when I hear you got to move past it, I don't like no. hearing that. I'm like, no, you gotta, you gotta find the way to get through it, whatever that looks like for you, and find your outlet. And you're right. It, I mean, it never ends. And you know, I'll get these nice little motivational things every day, and I just want to share this with your audience because it was so apropos for this meeting with you guys today. That your brain is your worst enemy, and then. It's your most beautiful, most wonderful friend. You just have to learn how to like traverse through it to, you know, to understand it. And the other thing is fear. If you 
give in to that fear and you run away, it'll never help you. But if you say, yeah, I'm going to deal with that and get through it, you're usually able to pat yourself on the back and say, man, this was the greatest experience. I'm so happy I did that. And I said, oh, I've got to share that with both of you today because that is so true for so many of us. Yeah. And if I could add to that, it's also like, don't give up. Because I think the first time we try something that's hard, if it doesn't really, if it's too hard, at least for me, I'll, uh, I couldn't do this and then kind of give up on it. But if you keep at it and try again, you'll be surprised because you'll get different results. I I think of that like with speed dating my therapist, right? So I went through three therapists before I found someone that worked. But like I put in the work. I put in a lot of work over the last 19 months. Yeah. I'm so happy to be alive and I'm happy I, I went through what I went through because I don't think that I would be at the point in my life where I am right now. It's still hard some days. Like, I'll admit I cried the other day. I hadn't cried in a while, but I cried and then I wrote and then I felt better and I slept through the night. So, yeah. it, you know, it it like it ebbs and flows, right? Like some days you're like really good and then all of a sudden something happens and you hit rock bottom again. But it's it's climbing back up to the top and using your tools to get you back to the top is what's helped me. And, you know, at six, I'm going to be 61 in a couple of weeks, but, you know, it's all these things that I'm learning now that I wish that I would have learned probably 20, 30 years ago, because I think I would have made life a little bit easier. And that's why I'm so happy we do this podcast, because there's, we have our age range is like 24 to 59. So if some 20-year-olds out there listening to this, I can use these tools. Yeah. Your life will be so much better. You know, I, I love that you said that because 30 years ago, we were told, oh, my God, it's taboo. You don't want to see a therapist. You know, it was like the plague. Mm-hmm. So yeah. we didn't have the tools. You kind of just went on and some people didn't make it. You know, but I'm just so happy that, you know, you guys are out there and you're spreading the word. And because everybody goes through this, nobody's like free from this. Maybe that's that happens in the afterlife. But it's like we all have to deal with this. Yeah. Mary, do you sometimes wonder, like, I wish I would have started writing when my kids were in the house before that life change happened? Or are you what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I love that question because I say, like, my theme throughout my trilogy is it is written in the stars, which means that's your destiny. And it wasn't, and things that are meant to happen for you may not have happened yet, but they will happen. So for me, I don't, I always say to myself, don't look back. You know, it wasn't meant to be then, and it's meant to be now. And that's the way I look at things. Yeah. Yeah. I sometimes wonder myself, like, I think it took me a while to find the therapist I did and get through what I needed to get through. And I'm so grateful for it. I wonder sometimes, should I wish that I would have done this earlier? Because I I think to some degree, I wasn't ready for it. Even though I thought I was, you know, like I I just wasn't. I think timing is everything. It happened when it needed to happen so that I was capable of of handling it. So, you know, I just wanted to ask. Yeah. Well, you're a badass. So, you know, (laughs) who? (laughs) Yeah. You're a badass. (laughs) So Mary, uh, another question I had is like, do you rethink about what your books are? Or do you have to be in like a special mood or atmosphere when you're coming up with your titles or does it come, do they come to you? Like when you're having a little bit of, bit of anxiety no they they come to me like my experiences in real life and I always carry this like my little notebook and I hear fabulous names or I get ideas or I have an experience I'll write it in so I really have titles like for another 10 manuscripts I haven't developed the story yet so I begin with the title I'll get a general idea of where I want it to go and then creating the characters is the most important thing. And then my, that's what gives me like the greatest joy is to start writing. And I always say one thing I did learn from my editor, 
because my editor would say to me, if you can see it in your head as a movie, you can put it down on paper. And that's what works for me. And she and I go back and forth all the time and argue and whatever. But that's, and that's what I enjoy. And yeah, sometimes I, like I'm relaxed. It'll come to me other, usually if I'm under severe stress, no, or the, that anxiety, no, it's not coming to me. It does help. And then once that starts to happen, you know, it's like that calm that comes over because you know what? You're not thinking about yourself and the shit that's going on. And there's something else going on. Your brain is focusing on something else. That's that part of it that we have to learn that it's so, so hard. If you could get yeah. that brain to focus on something else. And for me, like I'll always stress like the hobby. It's not writing or having a podcast that it's like if there's something in your body, in your soul that gives you such joy, that's what's going to help you, right? Yeah. You know, like I could not do what you guys do because that would give me such anxiety. But to <laughs> sit at my laptop and to worry about coming up with it, that doesn't give me anxiety because for me, I find I write one sentence and then it's like this explosion happens in my brain. It gives me ideas for something like three chapters down the road. And then I go, that's why I write. And that's why it gives me such pleasure. I have a question. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I love that. Like, that's kind of how I do it. But I will actually go outside, do a little bit of grounding before I, I sit down and do any writing. I won't do that in the winter because it's just damn cold up here. Yeah. But I find a way to ground myself or center myself before I can start writing. Center yourself. God, yeah, that's I'm, what I was thinking. I'm, a, I'm an ex-New Yorker. I grew up in Brooklyn. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, winters here suck. But it's okay. It's better than hurricanes. Yeah, true. We have our issues too. <laughs> I'm curious if do you feel like these books, whether they're fantasy or not, are an extension of some part of you? Oh gosh, an extension like of a piece me. of who you are. <laughs> Here's why I ask. I'll tell you why. I tell you I'll tell you where, where my thought was going. Cause I heard you said a line where sometimes you'll go back and forth with your editor. And for whatever reason, the immediate thought I had in my mind was like, oh my gosh, how would I handle that? Because I would pour myself into some sort of a, of a creative outlet. But now somebody has to consume that. And I get like this with the podcast, right? So somebody has to take it in and either like it or not, right? So like, how would I be able to stand for something that I created if somebody else didn't like it? So that's kind of where I was going with it. Like, how do you, I guess, stand up for what you've written and what yep. you've created? Well, one thing I did learn is as an author is any book that is out there, it begins as a manuscript. It is that heck is edited out of it for good reason. And you can love your editor, you can hate your editor, but damn, they know what they're doing. And there are many times that I finally just give in because they say, no, I want to go. But there are times where I know my characters inside out. They're not really me. They're figments of my imagination. And as I'm writing, I have to ask myself, what are these characters' motivations? So I don't walk around and I become the characters like loud. They, I become the character in my head to work through like why they should do this or why they should do that. And boy, I'll tell you, if there's a reason I feel it is so critical to that story, I'll fight the editor on it. But other times it's like they have such incredible ideas and they know how to manipulate your words and the sentence. And the editor that I've worked with or the editors on Publish Up, man, they really give you that masterpiece that you want. And yeah, it, it sucks. It sucks because they told me many times, how many times am I going to tell you? You don't know what you're doing. You know how many times I've heard that? Yes. And you really, and then that's where the drink comes after I'm done with them. <laughs> it's like, shoo, I need a couple of drinks tonight because they just like squashed you. But that's the journey. And then on the other end, when you get that book and it's, you know, you're like, shit, they knew what they were doing. 
<laughs> use my language. No, you're. No, you, you don't have to know. You don't yeah. have to worry about your language on this podcast. Not at all. I know. I, know. I was like, I'm surprised I have. A, have I? Oh, yeah, I, I have a really bad potty mouth. I oh, I was going to say, I'm always dropping F bombs. So. <laughs> me too. That's, yeah. I, I, no, go ahead. I was I, just going to say, like, you're giving me so, because a part of why I think I haven't opened up how create, like, my little creative outlet, like, I can resonate with you 100% when you say your husband's out doing a million things and your happy place is here. Like, that is me. Right now, I'm spending time to redo my room, my happy place to that will uh, allow me to be creative in there, right? Because I have all these ideas and I'm writing notes and I have this yeah. stuff that I want to do, but I've always been battling with the fear of failing. Yeah. If I am investing a part of myself and I don't quite know where this came from, so maybe I should go back to therapy. But if I am <laughs> investing my time, my money, I don't want to fail. And that's silly, right? Because like, that's part of life. You just, yeah. you got to, and so I'm getting to that stage where I'm like, you just got to do it. Like, what is the worst that can happen, right? Exactly. That's like, the, you, you hit the nail right on the head. The older you get, the more you hear failure is good. Everybody mm-hmm. fails. And you can come out on the other end. And it's like, one door closes, like for you guys, what you're going through the job, one door closes. And I truly believe there's going to be something better that opens up because I'm always that positive person. And one of the things you learn with the anxiety and depression is the more positive you are and the more grateful you are. And, the you know, that is such a big help to get through it. So true. So like when we were talking about failure. You know, we've had a couple of bad reviews on the podcast and, you know, I looked at them and I, you know, I reviewed them and I, I still know in my heart that we're doing the right thing mm-hmm. and we may not be everybody's cup of tea. And I, I get that, but I, I fully believe in like our podcast and my, you know, Dirty Skills is my best friend. I get to do this one Saturday a month yeah. with her and yeah. we've learned so many different tips and tools and tricks on just to how to manage my own depression, right? Like, yeah, yeah I, I still go to therapy. I go to therapy at least once a month. But, you know, there's other people that have gone through something similar where they may have a different tip or trick. And I'm yeah. always looking for to, you know, try something new. Yeah. 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 What those people do? They go kick rocks. Also, it's a choice. If you don't like it, don't listen to it. <laughs> right. Amen. <laughs> but no, you're giving me hope hearing yeah. your story, Mary, because it's helping like me kind of reiterate this to myself. Like, dude, you can do this. Like, it's fine. Like, it's not, I don't have to put so much pressure on it. I'm doing it for me at the end of the day. It's what I like to do. I like to be creative and whatever that means for me, you know? So I, I don't know. I appreciate you sharing this. Yeah. No, I mean, if there's something that you love to do, like, like I said, I had so many rejects. 10 years of rejections, but because this was such a passion and I always felt, you know what, if I never uh, published or, you know, at least I could go back and create because that was my outlet. That was my journaling is to create these fantasy worlds. Yeah. I have a random question. If you could relive any day, exactly how it was, you can't make any changes, relive that day, what day would you pick? And uh, I guess when I had my first child, <laughs> your life totally changed <laughs> from that point on. Yes. Yeah. What about you, Jira? I would go back to, it was right before my mom had passed away. I'd flown out to Colorado to spend some time with her. I would take that afternoon back. Yeah. It was super healing, super emotional. It was the last time I got to see my mom alive, Mm. but it was like, it was healing. Yeah. Yeah. I would not redo, you know, this might not be a popular thing to say, but I would not redo my son's first birth. I hated being in labor. Oh, God, (laughs) yes. (laughs) Traumatized. But what I would, there's one day that in my mind was almost perfect, which is hard because I'm a perfectionist. It was the day I got married. Everything was just, it was like almost like everything fell into place that day. 
Yeah. And the energy was so positive. So I would yeah. do that day all over again. Oh, you know, Biz is going to listen to this after and he's going to be like, oh, my life. <laughs> Yeah, you'd be like, oh, so sweet. All right, I have a random question. What is your favorite word? What is my favorite word? Oh, what immediately pops into my head was love. That's like the first thing that pops in because, God, that's everything, right? Love. It is. It is. Dirty Skittles, what's your favorite word? You're going to fucking ask me. <laughs> Favorite word, and then ask me my second. <laughs> yes, no, go go with your second. Okay, cause... what's your second favorite word? Fun. <laughs> yes, fun. Fun. I what's love my that word. Favorite word. Well, I know what your least favorite word is. No, oh, tell me. Good one. Yes. My favorite word probably is son. I would have to say. My son, I always say son. I'm like, son, yeah. because I just, I don't know. I've wanted a child for so long. So now that I have one, yeah. it's probably what I'm going to go with today. What about you, G-Rex? My favorite word is living. Yeah. Mm. Good because I'm so yeah. grateful to be alive. I wouldn't have anything I have today if I hadn't gone through all that other crap. Yeah. Really hard stuff, but living, life has so much to offer and I'll tell anybody, life on the side of depression is a thousand times better than it was yeah. prior. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Mary. Your story has been amazing. You've inspired me. You're giving me that confidence boost that I was like, oh, I'm almost there. I'm almost there on my own. Now hearing you, I'm like, okay, oh, this you is going to be good. inspired me because, you know, I just went through this like weird thing again where I felt like my brain just liked like there was the fizzle, like it just short circuited. And it was like, I, I lost memory and mm. I panicked. And it, it was the, a day where the anxiety level hit a hundred percent, bad family news and just all these other things. I was on a podcast. I forgot my train of thought. And like, I felt this thing in my brain fizzle. I got through it. So but it, I was like, oh, my God. It was like I thought I really was starting to lose memory. But I learned that de anxiety, depression, what happens to you, it's just horrible. And you do need those tools and to get help. You know, it's yeah. like never give up. Never, never give, give up. up. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. There's always that glimmer, right? There's yeah. that glimmer of it. You have that something hope that something better is going to come out of this. And it did for all of us, right? Yeah. For you and yeah. me, Mary, like, yeah. life has a way of, like, kicking me in the ass. And it literally, like, kicked me in the ass. But, you know, we get to do this and we get to share all this great information and tools, you know, yeah. with our listeners. And so where can our listeners find you? I am all over the place. I'm in... Don Barnes and Noble, any independent bookstore. If you go in, the book's not on the shelf. Just give them my name. They'll order it. Go to my author website, www.mary, M-A-R-Y, K, Savarese, S-A-V-A-R-E-S-E dot -E com. And I'll guide you to where, but yeah, if you're, if your audience loves fantasy and adventure intertwined with romance, then you'll love The Girl in the Twa Wallpaper and The Star Riders Club. And the third book in the trilogy, Return the Girl in the Twa Wallpaper. <laughs> that, see, that's, you guys are great with your podcast. And I just love to bring you to a fantasy place, give you an adventure away from our reality. I love that. I love that. Thank I you. Love thank this. you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much, Mary. You have a great weekend. Thank you so much. Hi, all. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. I'm G-Rex. And I'm Dirty Skittles. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review this podcast. We'd love to listen to your feedback. We can't do this without you guys. It's okay to be not okay. Just make sure you're talking to someone. <laughs>